Hello, uh, welcome to my latest video where I ask, answer one of your questions. In fact, as you can see, I've got like, I've worked out how to do surrounds and also I've worked out how to bring my website up. So instead of me just kind of yelling about my website in a video, I can show you the links that I'm talking about. Um, that I can refer you to. I'll also put the, any links that I make use of in this video in the show notes and in the blog over at the website. Um, so I've got a question that, um, to read out and then answer. First thing I should say, as you can see in the caption below, is that there's a content note for sexual violence in this uh, question and in my answer. Um, I'm not going to go into any like graphic detail. There's a tiny bit of detail in the question, um, but it's not it's not like a lot of detail. Um, but if you think you might be triggered or might find this very tricky to listen to, just feel free to skip it and watch another video. Um, or not, just have a cup of tea or whatever. Uh, not tea, uh, or coffee or hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, that's a nice soothing drink. Anyway, so that's your content note. Um, I'll kind of let you know when the worst bit's over uh, as we go through, um, try and do this as consensually as possible. Okay, so here's the question. So, I'm worried about my friend. She's a hopeless romantic and always seems to have a boy on the go, but never really has any official boyfriends just a few dates here and there. After one day going for, going for food, uh, she said she was um, going to meet this lad who she's been speaking to for on and off for like three months or so, and that they were just gonna go and chill. Um, then she gets back and says that he was only after one thing, sex. She refused, but he didn't make any conversation or seem interested in her like hanging out and chatting and was basically only interested in her body and in having sex. Um, he was pretty bold in trying to have sex with her. Um, after refusing sex, she gave him a blowjob. She doesn't normally go much further than making out. But I'm worried it was forceful, forceful, almost like she felt pressured after deciding not to shag him. She said that she was forceful in his, she said that he was forceful in his attempt to get her to do something, and she definitely won't be seeing him again. I feel awful like I should have stopped her from going or something, and scared that she felt like she was trapped in that house with no escape. Afterwards, in telling me, um, she asked if I was surprised that she'd done this, and also if she'd looked like a slag. Any advice on what to say that's sensitive to the topic? Um, first of all, thank you for your question. It sounds like you're a brilliant friend, and have been a brilliant friend, and will continue to be a brilliant friend, so thank you so much. The only person who should feel bad is this guy. Okay, that, that's literally the only, no one else should feel bad. He has made everyone else's lives way more difficult than this should be. It sounds like what he did is a criminal offence. I don't want to go into too much detail about different sexual offences, but what he did is a crime, okay, and a serious crime. Um, I'll just show you where you can find out a bit more about that, but that is not what um, consent looks like just kind of negging people into doing something um, isn't consent and kind of saying that you you kind of like trying to negotiate someone into having sex in that way and saying, well, if you have sex with me, what will you do? She felt that she was not in a position where she could say no or not even say no, but just to say, I'd rather just make out for a bit or do something like that. None of this about this was consensual. If people are put into a position where they don't feel like they can say no, they're in someone's house, they're older, uh, they're a guy um, that they're not really realizing they have power in that situation or that they do realize and they're using that power in that situation to get what they want. If someone can't say no because of those things, then it's wrong, it's a sexual offense. Even if it wasn't a sexual offense, it would still be wrong and non-consensual, but I think it probably is a sexual offense. And when you talk about force as well, like force doesn't have to be like, you know, uh, a threat of violence but um, it could be something that you don't know what might happen if you said no. Even that is enough to make someone feel pressured into doing something they don't want to do, which is non-consent, it's against the law, um, it's a sexual offence. It's a form of sexual violence. It's wrong, it's bad that it happened, and he should not be doing it. He should be the f person feeling bad. Whether you report it or not is kind of up to you, and I'll come on to that later, but this is on him, okay? He should not have done that. And I do get uh, some people who are perpetrators of sexual violence like this asking me uh, for 
uh, advice at my website and I've given them advice, I've given them a bollocking and told them how to do things better, it should be him messaging me, not you. Like, he should be asking me how to do consent better. And it shouldn't be on you guys to learn how to say no or learn how to stay safe. It's wrong and it's depressing that you're in that situation. Um, I'm going to do a bit of that and help you with some help, helpful advice. But the first and most important thing is that he did the bad thing here. Okay. You can read more about consent and the law at the website if you want. If you just go to consent, if you just search for consent and the law um, or click one of the links below. Um, so that's the first thing to say. Okay. The other thing to say as well is that sadly, this is really common um, sexual violence, particularly against women. Um, so the the last study that looked into it, the last major study in the UK was in 2011, and it was it's called the NatSal3 study. It's like the biggest like sex and relationship study that we have in the UK. They interview thousands of people. They found that one in 10 women had had sex against their will and that one in five women had, had reported someone trying to have sex with them against their will. And that's a really high number. In the US, it's actually one in five women who have had sex against their will. It's shockingly high. And it's the most, um, it's, for me, it's the most like problematic stat statistic that we cover in sex and relationships. It's like, it's the one thing that we should all be working to prevent is, uh, non-consensual sex uh, it's awful and it's depressing how common it is so but my point with this is that there was no she gave you no indication that anything was amiss like it's not like when we think about who commits sexual violence and what, what the image that we have in our head of what like what a rapist looks like or what a sexually violent person looks like um, isn't really true like most uh, acts of sexual violence are committed by someone we know and that could be someone that we're dating or someone that, you know, maybe someone's been chatting on Tinder or uh, maybe through a hookup or something. But also in serious long-term relationships, sexual violence happens really commonly. But also someone known to you, someone known to you growing up or someone in the family, someone that you've known for a long time. That, that by far and away, the vast majority of sexual offences and acts of sexual violence are in that context where the perpetrator is known to the person, to the victim or the survivor of the attack. So, you know, the way that you make the message sound is like, uh, the, the, this sound is that um, she was just going around there to chill and hang out, you know, and that sounds fine. But the thing is, is that it did sound fine. So there's nothing, you shouldn't feel bad for um, thinking it's normal for your friend to go around to some guy that they've been chatting to his house because we should expect that they go around there and have a nice time, okay? And in most cases, they do. I'm not saying that all men are rapists and that, um, that, that this happens all of the time, but it's so common that it should not be unexpected that it happens. And even with someone who on the, peer, on, on the face of it appears nice, right? If, they, if it sounds like they're pretty chill, uh, and then it turns out that they're not, there's nothing that you can do about that situation. It's just... It's just it's grim that I have to say it. Um, well, you know, I'll come on to some some more of this in a bit. But really, what there was nothing there was nothing amiss. It's not like you were kind of you know um, preventing a harm. It's not like uh, your friend was like about to cross out in the middle of the road and you could have stopped them or something. Um, it's not like there was a definite immediate risk. You didn't know that that risk was there. The risk is um, the risk was there, but you didn't know that was there with him. So you shouldn't feel bad about preventing it from going and also I think preventing people from doing things that I don't think is the best way to to treat people consent, consensually either which I'll come on to in a bit um, so the thing to do here as a really good friend is basically to rather than just preventing people from doing something that you think is risky it's about how we can empower each other to protect each other and support each other to um, take more informed risks that um, where we where we still feel safe like how can we live our lives how can we do us how can we um, have a nice time and do the things we want to do and how can we reduce the risk now obviously i think that part of what we need to do is to teach a lot of people how to do consent better and like to teach men to be better at consent which is something that i've been saying that you know i try to do but in terms of how you move forward with your friend here i think when someone's gone through something non-consensual like your friend has the answer is to bring in more consent. So rather than do less, bring in more. 
So in terms of your relationship, like how can you model this? Like how can you give someone options? So this guy who attacked your friend um, gave her no option. Like it was either, do you want to have sex with me? Yes or no. Well, are you going to give me a blowjob then? Yes or no. And she felt like she couldn't say no. And so when you feel like you can't say no, that's not an option at all. Okay. Like, and, but also even if you're just given two options, that's not really much of an option. So, you know, what he should have done was to say, uh, you know, you say that they were texting each other. They could have been like, um, well, you know, how do you feel about coming around? You know, I fancy maybe we could have some sexy times. And your friend could have said, well, you know, I only really tend to make out with people. But, you know, we could do that. And maybe we could discuss some other things you might be up for. Yeah, that's cool with me. We could try doing this or maybe a bit of dry humping. Yeah, I'd be happy for you to keep your clothes on and stuff. You know, that's what consent looks like. And then when they're with each other, if they were slow with each other and giving each other lots of options, and um, talking about what felt good and say and and suggesting what might feel good, but then also like ending it when the other person kind of wanted to, or when you got bored, or um, when you just kind of had enough. That's what consent looks like. Okay, so for you, what you need to do is to model that in your relationship with her. And I'm not you're not having sex with each other, but like, how can you do that in every other aspect of your life together? So how can you give each other options that more than just do you want to do this, yes or no? Like, how can you give at least three different options? So, for example, if you're going to eat, it could be like, um, do you want to get uh, Italian, uh, uh, Indian food, or like, uh, what's another food? <laughs> I don't like English food or something. I don't know what that is. But anyway, you know, fish and chips. Um, so, <laughs> I always think about food. Um, so, you know, and then you can say, well, I'm like 60% kind of... Um, Indian food, but I'd be up for Italian as well. Not so into fish and chips, but you know, if we did it this way, maybe I'd be more interested in that. Like, give each other options like that and give each other different ways of you get achieving like a win win. Something that you both want to do, something you're both going to enjoy, rather than one person kind of making or negging or persuading the other person to do something just because they want to do it. Okay, so that's the thing for you to do in all aspects of your relationship, like um, deciding when you want to hang out, where you want to hang out, do you want to go for food the things that you want to chat about if you're going to watch something on netflix what it is that you watch and how you watch it like there are loads of different ways of bringing in more choices more freedom more consent and what you're doing there is building up each other's agency so the more you experience consent the more you practice consent the more you the better you get at um saying what it is that you want and don't want and again i'm not to say that in any way your friend is to blame for any of this the guy is to blame like it's his fault. He has done a bad thing. He should write to me. Write to me. I'll give you a bollocking and I'll tell you how to do better next time. Um, but also you could report him to the police, which I'll come on to in a, uh, now, in fact. So often when a friend has gone through like a sexual assault, often what a friend might say is, well, you should report it. And I think sometimes that isn't the best thing to do because um, reporting is still is a very good idea. But it's saying, I think you should, is probably not a good thing to do because it should really be as much as possible their choice. And so instead of saying, I think you should report this, you could say, have you had any thoughts about whether you want to report this or not? You know, we could find out more information about what reporting looks like and where we might go, what our local services are like. Well, I mentioned that, I'll just show you how to find your local service. So um, on the homepage of the BISH website, if you go to sexual health services, if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a whole bit about sexual assault referral centers and they're a place where you can go after a sexual assault and it's a place where you can get healthcare um you can also access someone to talk to and someone to help you through it and um some some uh, like kind of therapeutic counseling type support going forward um here we go um there'll be a sexual assault referral center near you often they're called rape crisis in london they're called the havens uh, but different areas of the country have their different names for it and you can find your nearest one um, via the, the website here. You can uh, find I've got all the information there for you. You can also um, uh, you can also get uh, they can also take evidence from you if there's any DNA evidence or anything that she was wearing or something. Uh, you take it along in like a plastic bag. Again, more information there on the website. Um, and also, uh, it's a place where you can report it uh, if you choose to. You could also go to the police to report it as well if you wanted to. Um, and um, that's something that you could support with. And so the way to do that consensually is is to be like, oh, 
if you want, I could get some information for you. You know, how would you feel about this? Or we could leave it if you wanted to for another time, but just to flag up that this is something that we could chat about. You know, like giving options and providing support and knowing that she's going to be there and that you can respect her options is the way to move forward through this. It's the way to start doing bringing more consent in as well as in all the other ways as well. Um, I think the other thing that you could do is to use this as a way to give each other and to for yourselves and for each other to give yourselves some excellent sex and relationships education. Sadly, a lot of young people haven't had really brilliant sex and relationships education at school. Like it's pretty limited stuff that people get taught about consent. Usually, like yes means yes, no means no, um, that kind of thing. And then if you don't want to have sex, you should say no. And if someone doesn't have someone to have sex with you, you shouldn't make them. That's pretty much it for a lot of young people. Um, con uh, sex and consent and relationships and power is really um, important topics and uh, they're complex topics and they need to be talked about in a much more complex way. So you could do that um, at the website. I've got lots of stuff about this. So if you just search for consent in the search bar, so it brings up lots and lots of posts. Um, so you could do like, a, you could have a chat with each other but also your friends um, about different aspects of um, different aspects of consent. So this one is about who gets status and who gets stigma for having sex. Um, I mean, I'll just talk about that now actually. So um, your friend was saying that she felt like um, a slag for having sex. And I mean, I don't like the term slag. Um, I don't like any terms that um, that are shaming about people wanting to have sex and being interested in having sex. But that's not what your friend was doing. Like your friend was being forced to have a kind of sex that she didn't want to. She went there with her boundaries, which are, which was, I don't do, I don't generally speaking do more than making out with someone, and she was forced to give a blowjob when she didn't want to. That wasn't her choosing to have sex. So, she's even even if she were to judge herself by the term like whether she's a slag or not, which again is a term I don't like, because it wasn't something that she chose, she isn't, right? So for her, that was a way of keeping safe. And what happens when our body's under attack from someone is that we have four different responses known as the four F's. So it's either fight, flight, fawn, or freeze. And your, what your friend was doing here was quite sensibly, it was called fawn. And fawn is what happens when you just kind of go along with something and you do something in order to prevent a, a greater harm from happening to you. And often there's like a switching off process and you just kind of go through the motions and just do it in order that you can just get the hell out of there, okay? And that sounds like it was what's happening to your friend. When you're put in a position where you can't choose the things you want and you're having to do something which is the lesser of some other harms, that's fawn and that's not choosing to do something. That's just keeping yourself safe. So that's what's happened here, okay? Um, but um, just to go back to using this as like an opportunity to do some sex education with each other and with your friends and other people around you, you could chat about these things, like these big topics that would be, you know, potentially really interesting. Um, you could also share some graphics around, um, uh, around in your peer group and stuff. And you can kind of, if you use this as an opportunity to think, well, this is an injustice. This is a bad thing that happened. And I want to I want other people to learn from this. You could empower each other to use this as a way of how you might um, be able to, for at least with the people around you and then your people in your peer group, to get better at this stuff, because we all need to get better at this stuff, to have these conversations, to be able to talk about what consent looks like, and also to be able to talk, talk about power balances and how going around to a, a man who's a 19-year-old, going around to their place, that person has more power, okay? So how we talk about where people get power and where people don't get power and what we need to do when we have more power and how we can be more consensual when we have more power, they're really, really important topics for people to think about. So you could kind of help people do that, um, is all I'm saying. Um, there's loads of content on my website. There's loads of stuff, uh, good stuff about consent elsewhere as well, but you could use my website as a starting point. Um, so you could use this, as I say, you could use this as a way to like do some activism, to do some good, and that way you're empowering each other and you're empowering all the people around you as well to do better at consent. Um, um, and it's kind of like activism in a way. But also, lastly, I think that there is a way that um, you could address your relationship and to address what your friend is doing about um, romance. So you say that she's a hapless, a hopeless romantic. Um, you know, what does that mean? Like, do you get a sense of, like, she's kind of chasing these lads and she's not really valuing you so much? 
I mean, often what, what people choose to be in romantic relationships for lots of different reasons. Okay, so I'll bring this up. Uh, again, I, one of my most frequently used expressions is I've got something about this at my website, but um, I have often. I've been working on it for so long that, you know, uh, that um, I probably do have something. But if you think about all the reasons why people have romantic relationships, so bring that up here. Think about all the reasons that people have romantic relationships. Uh, you'll probably find there are loads and loads and loads of different reasons. So here's one I came up with, but you can come up with, you can write loads more down than that. So if you think about all the reasons for why people have different, uh, why different reasons why people have romantic relationships, and then think about which of those can only be achieved by being in a romantic relationships, you'll probably find that it's none, that all of those can be achieved from being in different kinds of relationships. So when we start to think about romantic relationships from that way, like thinking about, well, what gaps is it trying to fill? Am I trying to get everything that I want and all of my needs from a romantic relationship? And maybe I could just spread it out a bit and be like less hierarchical and more like just seeing everyone else as being an important, as being as important each, as each other. An opportunity for you here is to say to your friend, look, I really value our relationship. I think our relationship is wonderful. I really love the things that we do together. Um, the other thing that you could start to do is to start treating each other as if you're like dating each other. So I think that you can that we that romance isn't just about um, sex, just as sex isn't just about romance. Okay. So I think that what you could do is to start to think of ways that you could have a really important, nurturing, caring, wonderful, joyous relationship that is a friendship right, that doesn't involve any sex, like, you know, you don't have to be in a romantic relationship to have sex, it might be that your friend, in order to have sex, she wants to be in a romantic relationship, and that's fine, but that doesn't mean that you only have to have one romantic relationship, you can have a romantic friend relationship, where you don't have sex, and you are romantic AF, uh, as the young people say, or probably millennials now, um, probably not a Zoomer thing to say. Um, so I've got uh, I've got a thing at my website about this, um, about what romance is. Uh, so if you think, uh, not romance, that's not a word, uh, uh, but if you think about that, what counts as romance, and actually, so think of it as like, if you were going on a date, like if you were going on a date with someone that you had, were in a romantic relationship with, how might like, that look? So you might um, have a lot of chats about where it is you want to go, what kinds of things you want to do. You try and look for a win-win situation there of something that you both wanted to do rather than one person kind of making someone do something the other person wasn't so sure about or wasn't so keen on. You shouldn't have to like persuade each other to go somewhere. So for example, um, you know, uh, this doesn't exist, but if one of you wanted to go to the pictures or cinema and the other person wants to go bowling, you could be like, well, how about we go to a cinema bowling alley? Uh, cinema bowl. <laughs> Stupid name. Anyway, uh, that probably doesn't exist. But anyway, you could go to a cinema bowl and it's like a win-win situation. And then you could get there and instead of being on your phone, you just you can be really present with them the whole time and really like enjoy the evening, like be like be with them, pay attention to them, um, listen to what they're saying, um, and you know notice whether you, when you you're having a good time. And then when you leave, you could text each other and say, "Oh, that was a really good night," or "That cinema bowl place was weird, but you know it was fun." And then you, then later on, you might have some memories about the terrible film you watched at cinema bowl, or how one of you just never managed to hit one of those pins, or I don't know, I don't, ugh, cinema bowl. It sounds like a terrible place, but you know you do you. If you want to go there, go cinema bowl. <laughs> Um, so, um, but that's what that's what people do in romantic relationships. Why can't people do that in friendships? So, if you did that in friendships and do the other stuff as well, like uh, checking in with each other, saying sending good night texts to each other, or checking in every day with how someone is, if someone likes that kind of you know that kind of texty kind of relationship, you could celebrate anniversaries, you could just celebrate each other, you could say that you loved them because you know you might. So, these are all the kinds of things that you could do. And so it feels like this moment in your relationship is like a potentially really important kind of moment for both of you, both for you and for your friend, um, and something that you can learn from. And in friendships, people go through these kinds of adversities and how they support each other and how they, how they love each other afterwards, how they do the things uh, to support each other and to um, be there for each other afterwards can be a real turning point in people's relationships and can be a real like you know important reminder about how important your relationship is and it can be something going forward that can feel really special 
Um, so this isn't all depressing. I mean, it is depressing that sexual violence is so common, um, but this is something that you can you can move forward in all the different ways that I've kind of talked about. Um, I think that's about it. So um, I hope you found that useful, uh, and I hope you um, uh, you can take some of this advice and uh, and move forward with it. Um, again, I'll put some of these links to these thing to um, to these uh, web pages in the in the notes below, but also um, I'll write a little blog about this at Bish as well. That'll be under the Your Questions category banner at the top of the page um, or in the menu bar. Um, the other thing, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me, you can if you go to bishuk.com forward slash ask Bish, ask hyphen Bish. Uh, but if you, you can find that by just going to the bottom of the menu bar there, ask Bish. Um, you uh, here's all my terms and conditions before you ask me a question. Okay, so um, uh, please also don't ask me if you're pregnant or not. I've, I can't tell you. I have no access to your urine. Uh, I've got no idea. I've written loads and loads and loads of advice about this at the website. I've done videos about this. Please look at this first. Please stop asking me if you're pregnant or not. I'm sorry. Um, and you can put your email in here if you want to, if you want me to get back to you uh, and put the subjects in there and you type your message there. And there's a security code thing, but that's really easy. So you can ask me a message there. Um, and um, also, if you're an adult watching this and you want to support the website, if you could please um, share widely uh, the website and share it among your people, share it in school and share it in your youth centres and. Uh, the work that you do with young people, but also I've got a Patreon, so if you want to chip in and help support the Patreon, you can just chip in um, a few dollars a month, a couple of dollars a month, that will help me do extra things like pr uh, print posters and help promote it, uh, promote the website even further, although it's pretty popular, thousands of young people find it a day via Google search, but I'd like young people to find it by other means, uh, and also Jurex sponsor the website as well, so thank you very much to them for supporting me at this tricky time. So thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned until I do another video. Until then, bye.